Before beginning, remove the boiler and parts from the box and check everything is present and correct. In addition to the boiler, there should be an installation manual, warranty card, filter, fixings, olives and a boiler template. Place the template on the wall and mark the fixing positions. EHC boilers can be fitted in just about any location as long as they're installed in the upright position and protected against moisture and frost. Remember to leave the recommended clearances as shown on the boiler template. Mark the holes on the wall, drill, plug and insert the fixings. Then carefully lift the boiler and hook it over the fixings. Be sure to secure and fully tighten the fixings at the bottom. Next, remove the front cover of the boiler. There are two screws to remove and the front cover can then be lifted up and out and swung to the side. Carefully remove the earth cable connection before putting the front cover down. Connecting the main power to the boiler is the next step. A mains cable needs to be connected to the main terminal block here. The cable can be run up through the cable access point at the bottom left hand side of the boiler here. Make sure the mains power cable is connected correctly as loose connections will cause damage to the boiler's main terminal block. The boiler must have a local means of power isolation that can be easily accessed. The isolator should be rated according to the boiler size. All mains power cables must be sized appropriately depending on the boiler size and remember that all electrical connections must be made by a qualified electrician and in accordance with current IEE regulations. The control stat connections can be routed in the same way as the mains power cable. Please note that the control stat cable has to supply a volt free switch to the NA connection within the boiler. The boiler can be plumbed in in the same way as any other system boiler and can be connected to various system designs. On page 6 of the installation manual you'll find detailed schematics for heating only and heating and hot water systems. We recommend using an automatic bypass valve on the S-Plan system and set to a flow rate of 8 litres per minute when all valves are closed and only the bypass valve open. We would also recommend the use of an automatic bypass valve on the heating only systems. If all radiators have thermostatic valves fitted, this valve should also be set to 8 litres per minute. We supply a magnetic filter with our boilers which will help protect the boiler's internal components from any debris or magnetite particles that may be within the system's water. The filter should be fitted horizontally as shown. We also recommend that the filling loop should be fitted before the filter. With the boiler now plumbed in and connected, it's time to commission the system. Fill the system with water and an approved cleaning agent such as Furnox or Sentinel to a pressure of 1.5 bar. Bleed all the radiators to remove all the air from the system and bleed the main pump by removing the plug. After all the air has been removed from the system, the boiler's main power supply can be switched on. The boiler's software version will be shown on the front control panel, then the control panel will stabilise and show the system temperature setting. Turn the room thermostat up and make sure the programmer or timer is in the on position and asking for heat. The boiler will start operating and you'll hear the water being circulated around the system. Further bleeding of the system and pump may be required. Allow the boiler to run with the cleaning solution for a minimum of one full hour or to the manufacturer's instructions before switching off. The boiler can now be flushed out and refilled with a chemical inhibitor. For normal operation, the pressure needs to be set at 1.5 bar. Remember to reconnect the earth strap when replacing the front cover. The boiler is now ready for use.